Yo, what's good? My name is Kangla Kangaroo. I'm a Canadian that's currently living and working in Seattle as a software engineer. And on this channel, we explore tips and tricks that people can take advantage of in order to reach fire faster. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how far $1,300 can get you in Seattle. All right, so starting right away with the tour, this is a two bedroom apartment. Immediately when you enter the apartment, you have the washroom. This is a pretty big bathroom. There's a lot of space in here, big tub, full shower. There's a lot of storage in this washroom. I guess for two people, it's a lot of storage. That's me, hello. For some reason, the fan is also an infrared light. And I've lived in some grimy bathrooms before so it's just nice to have a nice upgrade and have a nice clean normal washroom right outside the washroom we have the laundry machine you know the first two years that i lived in seattle i didn't have a washer and dryer and unit and now that i have one i love it i don't know how if i can go back and i think this is what they mean by lifestyle creepy right next to the washroom we have the first bedroom this is the bedroom that i'm taking right here we can see the desk i'm not completely moved in yet so don't mind the mess i'm still in the process of moving facing the desk we have these two big windows that, that basically spans a whole entire room so it gives a lot of nice natural light next to that we got my guitar over over there which i have not taken out of the case yet and this big bed little nightstand over there now this closet is like decently spaced it's got a lot of space for my clothes i honestly would prefer closets if they didn't have these doors but i think that's literally just me and then underneath the bed we got some under bed storage next we have the second bedroom this is my roommate's room we can see bed here desk there chair another big window dresser and then a lot of storage space here as well leaving the second bedroom now we're into the hallway this is the coat rack so we keep our suitcases in here because there's not a ton of space in our rooms next to the coat rack we have some more storage we got the water heater in here air mattresses for when people sleep over lots of little storage for like kitchen stuff or whatever speaking about kitchen we make a left and now we're into the kitchen wow that's really overexposed one second all right moving into the kitchen i have to close the blinds is really really bright we have a pretty normal kitchen oh freezer check fridge check yeah i'm still moving in so there's not a lot in there we got some storage area for some pots and pans a lot of counter space we have a very standard dishwasher and this kitchen is nice because it opens up into the living room so you can i guess you can have a chat with someone while you're cooking dinner but moving on to the living room we have this little desk right here which is like our work from home desk when our friends come to visit so they can just work here some bar stools for when you want to eat and a nice little couch tv and a dining not a dining table and a coffee table and of course these really big windows and that lets in a ton of light as you can see the lights are not turned on in the place right now so that's how good the light is all right so even though this unit is really nice it's not even the best part about this apartment the best part is actually the view from the roof which i'll show you in one second let's go and we get an elevator that's nice no more stairs Okay, so it's super bright outside, so we're not actually able to see anything from the camera because everything's overblown. But I'll take a quick video with my phone so you can see. But I mean, like, look at this view, bro. Like, look at this. Crazy. And I'll give you a little view of the patio as well. Little communal garden going on. Yeah, super sick vibe up here. Today, you can't really see it, but the mounds are right behind the Space Needle across the lake. Then we got views of downtown right there. Super nice as well. But yeah, this place is really nice to come out to. Just chill in the summer, have a nice beer. You know, watch the sunset. At nighttime, all of these lights in the city light up and at the Space Needle too. And it's so nice to just sit and relax. So I think this is definitely probably the best part of the whole entire apartment. Definitely worth the view. All right, so now that I've shown you the roof, let's go back to the apartment and talk about some logistics. Okay, so I actually lied about the roof being the best part of this apartment. In reality, that's probably number two. Number one is definitely the cost. The total cost of this apartment is $2,550, and that's including water, sewage, and gas. Now, if you divide this by two, it works out to $1,275 a person, plus an extra like 75 bucks in electricity and internet, bringing the total to $1,350 a person, which is, if you ask me, a crazy deal. It's so crazy, in fact, that you're probably thinking to yourself, there's no way that this guy was able to find this on like PanMap or Zillow or whatever and you would be correct. So my friend actually owns this unit inside of the apartment complex and he's recently moving out of the city and was kind of in a rush to move to be honest. So rather than renting it to a random tenant, he opted to rent it to people who he knew wouldn't trash the place. Because of that, he gave us a little bit of a discount as well. Part of the deal is that we're keeping all the furniture. Number one, it's a lot easier to rent it out to the next person if it's already furnished. And number two, I think he was kind of in a rush and didn't have enough time to sell or donate everything. So all the furniture that you saw earlier, including that goofy like let's eat sign, it's not actually my furniture. It's from the previous owner, which is my friend. So yeah, I got pretty lucky with this place, but I do feel kind of bad because I misled you a little bit. You know, this is kind of a hard place to get. It's kind of a special circumstance. So you wouldn't be able to get this if you were just moving to the city. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take you to my old apartment where my rent is actually less than 1300 and I'll give you a tour of that as well. Okay, so now we're in my old apartment or my current apartment, I guess. And this is a three bedroom unit that I've lived in for the past year. Imagine you're walking in and this is the first thing you see. So this is the living room area. Obviously there's not a lot going on here right now because I'm in the middle of moving out. Um, I'll try to throw on some old videos that I have of the old living area so that you can see. To the right of the living room, we have roommate number one's room. This is a pretty big bedroom. It's got carpet. It's the only one 
one in the place that has carpet, uh, he's still waiting for his new place to open up to be able to move in. So he's still got a lot of his stuff here. This is a really big window. It basically spans the whole entire room. And that's a double bed just to get an idea of how big the room is. Over here we have me, what's up? And pretty big closet here that has like two sides. A nice little chair to sit on and read. So this is my room. This is the biggest of the three rooms. Yeah, so we got these big, big windows, um, Victorian style windows. I'm not, I'm trying not to show you too much outside. I know it's overblown, but even if it wasn't, I wouldn't show you. I'm not trying to get doxxed by like a geo guest or savant. This room has also has a really big closet. This is really useful for storage. My room also has these French doors, which is cool as an idea, but in practice, not so much. There's like literally zero sound isolation. And like, look, you can really see me. Here I got my work from home desk in my chair. So like I said, I'm in the middle of moving. So not everything's moved over yet. I still got the internet at this place. So I got to use this as like my work from home office. Moving through the double French doors, we're back into the living room. This is a really nice couch that I'm going to be selling. Here is where the TV used to be. Just imagine a TV there, coffee table here. Uh, there were some lamps and stuff. But yeah, walking through the used to be living room we now enter the kitchen now this is a pretty basic kitchen there's not a lot going on there's no dishwasher which um, kind of sucks i don't really use it with three roommates it's nice to have a dishwasher regular size fridge regular size oven and stove over here we got a little cabinet just for the rice cooker and the kettle and stuff like that so yeah it's a pretty basic kitchen nothing too crazy it's nice that's a little bit separated from the rest of the place so you know you're not cooking in front of everybody which is a little bit nice leaving the kitchen area we get into the hallway this has this really big storage area like there's a lot of shelving here inside we just kept like camping stuff and like skiing stuff um, some cleaning supplies as well i gotta move a lot of this stuff to the new place you've also noticed that you've not yet seen a washer dryer that is because there is no in unit laundry and there's only two washers and two dryers for the whole entire building, which has like 16 plus units. So I will not miss that either. All right, moving down the hallway. Now we're getting into the washroom. I'm not gonna lie, I will not miss this washroom. I don't know if you heard that sound, but that's a great outside. It's very loud, I will not miss that either. Yeah, so this is a pretty basic washroom. It's a little bit dingy, I'm not gonna lie. The toilet doesn't flush at all really too well. And then the water pressure here kind of sucks. So I will not miss this washroom. These switches didn't work. Like we had to come get someone to fix this. Like you would turn one switch on and it would turn the fan on or you would turn the fan on it would you know turn the lights off that sort of thing but yeah like i said i will not miss i will not miss this washroom all right leaving the washroom now we have roommate number three's room this room is the smallest of the three rooms but also it's pretty big i would say you could definitely fit a double or a queen bed in here very comfortably and a desk dresser all that stuff he's got a closet in here as well also these old apartment buildings always got these like weird tubes i don't really know what it's for i never hear any water going through it so I'm not sure what that's for, but yeah, this is room number three. This roommate's all moved out, so completely empty room. Okay, so that basically concludes our apartment tour. Let me sit down and let's talk specifics. Like I said earlier, this is a three bedroom unit and the total rent for this whole entire spot is $3,565, I'm pretty sure. And then on top of that, you have to add water, sewage, gas, which is paid per usage, and then internet and electricity. So everything added up and then divided by three, you get around $1,300 a month, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I've never paid more than $1,350 while living for the whole entire year at this place. And I'm pretty sure most months it's actually a little bit under $1,300, let's say like $1,289 or $1,290 or something like that. You know when a lot of people move to Seattle, they'll first move to SLU because you know the buildings are nicer, it's quieter, it's safer, it's less dirty. You know, to be honest, those are all really fair points, but the buildings in SLU are more expensive than they are in Capitol Hill, and you're gonna be going to Capitol Hill to have fun anyways, so you might as well just stay here. And while I do like living in Capitol Hill, I can admit that sometimes it's a little bit sketch and it's a little bit dingy, but it's where all the fun stuff happens and where all the bars are and where all the food is. So overall, I enjoyed this neighborhood. Now, the key to having really cheap rent in Seattle is obviously having roommates, but I totally get that people don't wanna do that. But like I said a little bit earlier, before I was living with roommates, I was actually living by myself. And personally for me, it just kind of sucked. I went from living with people my whole entire life. At some point in university, I was living with like 10 people in one house. So going from that to living alone just with my demons was a little bit too much for me. Jokes aside, it's nice having someone around and I traveled decent amount. So having someone hold down the fort when I'm not here is also a big plus in my opinion. And to top it off, I actually like my roommates. I actually knew them before I moved in with them. So it's not like I was living with a random stranger. And this is apartment three in the span of two years. And so hopefully this is the last one for a while because honestly, I'm getting really tired of moving. It's exhausting. The worst part of moving, in my opinion, is switching the addresses on all the accounts that you have. And it's just annoying to keep track of everything because you don't know if you switched everything. So if someone can come up with a service that does that, I would gladly pay like 20, 30 bucks for that. So if anyone wants an app idea, there you go. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about my new place. It'll be nice once I'm all settled in. But if you're actually wondering how you can find an apartment or how much I paid when I was living alone, you can watch this video right here where I go over the steps on finding a one bedroom apartment.